Sorry for the wait. This took a very long time to edit. Anyway, I want to make a video of this game because not many people have done it before, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, my last video of this game was like two months ago. Hey, future me here. Uh, it was actually three months ago because I procrastinated so much. So, yeah. Future me here again. It's been five months ago. Almost done with the video. Just watch the video. So, I really need to make this video, like, really soon. So, before I stall for another two months from making this video, here are the new SCPs that were added because I stalled way too much and the game updated. Uh, so yeah, here are the new SCPs. The first SCP is SCP-517, which looks and acts like a fortune teller machine, but gives very strange cards to the player like, your mother raised you better than that and you'll find out soon enough. After a while from getting the card, the player will eventually get a black screen and get grabbed by these black hands, which will then tear them apart and kill them. The next SCP is SCP-120, which is an inflatable pool that can teleport the player to pretty much anywhere in the game, including SCP-1499. Once the player gets teleported, they cannot be teleported for another 30 seconds until they'll be able to teleport again. The next new SCP is SCP-224, which is pretty much just a clock that makes you old. When you're old, you move slower, and when you run, you have a high chance of tripping and taking 10 damage. Pretty boring if you ask me. The next SCP is a very complicated one. I think SCP-093 is the disc, but it could be the dimension that you go through. But either way, you use the disc to go into a dimension, and you then travel through it till you get to this weird shrine place. Now, I know that there's probably more detail about this SCP in the actual SCP universe, but I'm just showing you what's in the game, so that doesn't really concern me. Although, if you do want more detail into SCP-093, I put a link of a video made by Sidious, or however you say it, who explains it way better than I could. So go check that video out after this one. Link to it will be in the pinned comments. Man, I'm I'm shouting out a YouTuber who has 10 times the amount of subscribers as me. This is insane. With those four new SCPs out of the way, we can get to breaching SCPs. So the first one that you can breach is actually in con one is SCP-999. Breaching SCP-999 is a little bit tedious, but you pretty much just have to lure it out of its cell and then close the door behind it and then you've breached it. So immediately going out of con one, we go into con two with SCP-035. This is probably the most breached SCP because it's probably one of the most easiest. To breach SCP-035, you can either get a Class D as Chaos Insurgency and lead him to get SCP-035, or you could go solo as a Class D to reach SCP-035. Yeah. Yeah, and then you just go in here, and it's like, yippee, you get the mask. To go solo as a Class D, first you have to get the crowbar and go into the vents to go to Chaos Insurgency base. Then you have to get the crowbar from there so that you have a new crowbar. And then you have to go to the con two vents. Then once you do that, you have to go to SCP-914, set it to very fine, put in your crowbar. Then you get a blowtorch, then set it to fine, put in your blowtorch, and then you get a hacking tool. Now you can go to where SCP-035 cell is, hack both of those doors, and then you have 035 solo. Also to recontain 035, uh, you just kill him. You also slowly lose it. Yep. Alright, bye. See you next oh! time. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> the next SCP I'll cover, SCP-701, can be breached with skill from Class D, or it can be breached with the help of CI. Or, you could use the same solo breaching method that I used for SCP-035, but I wouldn't really recommend it since this SCP isn't very good. When a player becomes SCP-701-1, 
They'll get a knife and not be able to use any of their guns since they'll be an SCP. And it's okay. You get infinite stamina. You get a one-shot knife. But most of the combat in this game is using guns, so it's only really good if you want to 1v1 one of your friends. Here, here we go. Wait, here, let me let me go over here. Right, here we go. Three, Three two, two, one, go. Here you go. I got my auto super on. Bro, you're cheating. Oh, let's go. I'm too good. I'm too good at the game, bro. The next SCP I'll be covering is the infamous 173. To breach 173, you need to make a sort of conga line of people all looking at each other, and then they all blink one by one so that it can get outside of its cell. Because of this, it's not worth breaching 173 at all. You need at least three people to cooperate or at least accidentally look at him for him to get out of his containment cell. And then, he'll barely kill anyone because it's so easy to not die to him. To recontain 173, you need to get that 173 cage in the rapid response unit spawn area. After that, you just need to get someone else to look at 173 with you cage him, and then hope a class D doesn't interact with him in the next 60 seconds, and then he's recontained. So, not that much of a threat at all. Go over here. And Wait, which I, way are we facing? Uh, look, look at me, look at me. Look at you? Okay. Alright, now press B. There you go. That's how you release him. The next SCP, SCP-008, is also not very worth it to breach, but it is still possible. To breach SCP-008, you simply have to go into its containment cell, where you will get infected. After that, just try to run into a group of people and hopefully you'll turn into a zombie on time to kill some of them. It's hard to do this though because there's a rule where facility members can't breach SCPs, so it'd be hard to get into an area with a lot of people without getting shot first, but it is still possible. Uh, I don't have footage for it though because I forgot to get it with my friends. <coughs> The last SCP that you can breach in Kantu is SCP-409. SCP-409 turns out is also not worth to breach, but it is a bit easier than some of the others. Like SCP-008, to breach SCP-409, you need to go into its containment cell and touch the crystal inside of it. Then you just walk up to a group of people who will also get infected when you touch them. The problem is, once you get infected, you're immediately an SCP so people can shoot you while they are running towards them, but I still don't have footage of this because I forgot. Now moving on to Con X is SCP-457. To breach SCP-457, you just need to lure it out of its cell without getting too close. Once you do that, just lure him out into the hallway or into the Con X checkpoint and you're done. Now would be a good time to move or else he'll kill you. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. Oh, oh. all right, hold up. All right, too easy, that's too easy. To recontain him, however, you'll need to get a frost thrower, either from his cell or from the RRT spawn area. Then you'll just need to freeze thrower him till he shrinks up and disappears. Although, it is a little bit buggy and I do die trying to do that. Ugh, I died, bro. The next SCP in Connex, SCP-049, is a plague doctor that can turn people into zombies. To breach him, pick up the lavender item in his cell or in the RRT area, interact with him so that he follows you, and then just lure him out into an area with a lot of people and shoot him, and then it'll go on a rampage turning people into zombies. To recontain him, just wait till he's calmed down and then use the lavender item on him to lure him back into his cell. The next SCP, SCP-2006, is a shapeshifter who, depending on which character he is, sometimes kills people, but also sometimes doesn't. To lure him out, just lure him out like you would a zombie. Very descriptive, I know. Once he is out of his cell though, shooting him should make him aggro, but only sometimes, which is kind of strange, but it does most of the time. This guy's not very worth breaching just because of how inconsistent he is. To recontain him, however, just wait till he's not aggro anymore and then interact with him to put a leash on him and then walk him back into his cell. The next SCP, SCP-939, or also known as the dogs, are red dogs that mimic human sounds. To breach them, you'll first need to go into the control panel inside of their cells and open basically all of the doors inside. Then you just shoot them to lure them out, but do keep your distance because they are really fast and can kill you easily. It's best if you can just breach one dog at a time since you can always go back for the others later. To contain SCP-939, 
you just need to kill it. But they are beefy, so try to get into an area where you can still shoot them, but they can't get to you. The best place for this is probably the Con X checkpoint office door, as you can see in the clip that I'm showing. But there are other places to get them stuck, like some of the barriers in the Con X hallways. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I, I know what I'm doing. Doesn't even stand a chance, bro. The next SCP, while technically not the last SCP in Con X, is the last SCP in Upper Con X, is SCP-017. SCP-017 is pretty much just a shadow that kills you, best way to describe it. To breach it, you'll need to shoot the electrical box inside of its cell, which will turn off all the lights in the cell. But after this, there's almost no way to save yourself since there isn't enough time to equip the special flashlight in its cell to save you. Because of this, if there's a second person you're working with, they can lure them out into the hallways, aka die. Well, you can lure them out further into the Con X checkpoint. Except we didn't do that here because we're bad. To recontain SCP-017, you'll need to get that special flashlight either in its cell or again in the RRT area and use it to push back 017 back into its cell. And then you have to fix this. You can run in here. And then... When I'm, oh shoot, I died. <laughs> now moving into lower connex, the next SCP is SCP-106, also known as Radical Larry. Don't ask me why. To breach SCP-106, you either need to go into a cell and turn off the magnets in its cage, or you can just shut down the generators, which is generally the much easier option. After this, you'll just need to wait till SCP-106 goes out of a cell, and then it'll be breached. To recontain SCP-106, You'll first need to restart the generators, if they're off, and then go back to a cell with another person. Once you're both there, one of you will need to go into the femur breaker to lure SCP-106 back into a cell. Once the person is in the femur breaker, you'll need to turn it on and break their femur, even though they could still walk if they get out, and then he'll be in his cell. Once he's permanently in his cell, not just going out of his portal, you can turn on the cell's magnets and he'll be recontained. Also, forever's in the femur breaker, you'll be sent to his pocket dimension. To get out, just pick a direction and hope you get lucky. The next SCP in Lower Connex, SCP-096, also known as Shy Guy, is just a little shy guy. To breach him, you'll first need to prep the hallways for you and preferably someone else to run through. Then you'll have to look at his face and then book it straight back to the Connex elevator. It's okay if the doors close behind you, by the way, as SCP-096 is able to open the doors himself, or break them. Once you get out of the elevator, if you're even able to just get him out of the elevator room, then he'll be breached enough to kill some people. To recontain him, you'll first need to get some face scrambling goggles from the RRT area, or from 096's cell so that you don't die to 096 right when you see him. Once you have the goggles, you'll be able to go up to 096 and tie a rope around him, and then be able to escort him to his cell. As long as nobody looks at his face while he's moving there, he should be easily recontained. The next SCP in Lower Connex is technically SCP-610, but that SCP is not really in the game yet, so the actual next SCP is SCP-076, also known as Abel. To breach Abel, well, you actually have to buy a 500 Robux ticket and then you'll be able to become Abel. Although it's not really worth it since you're only able to use it for one life. When you do become Abel, you'll have two abilities, a ground slam and a sword throw. The ground slam is mainly just for distance and also an attack. And the sword throw is really overpowered, but it has a really long cooldown, so it kind of cancels out. In my opinion, it's not really worth buying Abel, so maybe don't. Also, to recontain Abel, kind of just shoot him a bunch. He has some phases where he has a shield and you can't damage him, but you just need to shoot him more. So, yeah, have fun shooting. Thank you so much for watching till the end. This was by far my biggest project yet, and also the one that I procrastinated the most on, so that didn't really work out. Also, as of recording, we've hit 600 subscribers, so thank you so much for that as well. But uh, yeah. Hope you enjoyed the video for the literally 15 of you still Why watching. Sound like that? You know, I was gonna make a comment on how Logan would be watching, but he told me he doesn't even watch my videos, even though he's in them. And he said he's not even subscribed, so screw him. I mean, yeah, but still, like, why does it. That's insane. It wasn't normally like. No, 
No, so for Brayden, it's like amplified by a thousand percent, though. That's the same for yeah. me, too. It's so weird. Just like, don't don't shoot your gun, bro. But like, what if I really need to? You don't. You don't He's need to. He's gonna kill me. You do not need to shoot your gun. So just don't. Don't shoot your gun. Alright, over here. Oh. Bro, literally. Literally just like, bro.